In 2013, Tesla showcased its own battery swapping station, demonstrating the ability to remove the entire 2,000 pound battery from its vehicle and replace it with a new one in about 90 seconds. This was not only significantly faster than charging the vehicles at a charging station, but Tesla also showed it to be twice as fast as filling up your car with gasoline. Tesla built its own pilot battery swapping station in California, however, the project was shut down and Tesla never ended up expanding the battery swapping initiative. Meanwhile, in China, the company NIO has been building out battery swapping stations faster than even their own regular charging stations. They hold over 1200 battery swapping related patents, and NIO stations are actually in use, having performed over 500,000 battery swaps. So why is battery swapping so popular with NEO in China? What are the advantages and disadvantages of the technology and the business model? And will Tesla change its mind and bring battery swapping back in order to compete with NEO and show them who's boss? Let's find out. Before we begin, we'd like to give a very special thanks to our sponsor for this video, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a problem-solving based website and app with a hands-on approach to learning math, computer science, and engineering. I was actually looking at their Intro to Neural Networks course, which helps to teach concepts similar to those used in Tesla's full self-driving software to have the vehicle drive on its own. Brilliant has over 60 courses that have storytelling, code writing, and interactive challenges. So head on over to brilliant.org slash the market is open, and you can sign up for free and also the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So check out brilliant.org slash the market is open right now to take advantage of their offer. Neo has already made great progress building out battery swapping stations in China with over 160 stations and plans to increase that number to 1000 over the next few years. Let's look at some advantages that Neo brings to the table with its swapping solution. The major advantage of battery swapping is the obvious speed increase over traditional charging. NEO's battery swapping machines are set to take 6 to 10 minutes for the entire process of driving the vehicles into the swapping station and swapping the battery. This can be very convenient for owners that are in a hurry who don't want to wait 15 to 40 minutes at a regular charging station. Furthermore, when you swap your car battery, the new battery that you get could not only be fresh with its full capacity and no degradation, but it could also have better technology, perhaps more energy capacity. Neo has hinted that if the technology advances, swapping could make it much easier to upgrade. Of course the vehicle would still need to be compatible with the newer advanced battery type. Currently, Neo sells a 70 and 100 kilowatt hour battery for its latest vehicle it's theoretically possible that you can choose the smaller battery for everyday work and the larger battery for road trips. However, it looks like there are two versions of the car that need to be purchased, one car that takes the 70 kilowatt hour battery and the other that only takes the 100 kilowatt hour one. If interchangeable batteries were supported, then there would need to be excess space or material around the smaller 70 kilowatt hour battery in order to hold it in the 100 kilowatt hour slot since the batteries are physically different in size. However, this may be a little less efficient, similar to requiring extra filler material when putting a nano SIM card for your phone inside a holder when placing it into a standard SIM card slot. Neo also offers a unique subscription service that allows customers to not actually purchase the battery and instead lease it. This saves about $10,000 upfront for Neo's vehicles and costs between 150 to 250 US dollars per month to lease the battery. This might be a great option for some customers who don't have this larger down payment available. Tesla on the other hand is totally against battery swapping. There have been recent rumors that Tesla might get back into the battery swapping business. The main argument is that Tesla should take on NEO in battery swapping, perhaps only in China even, since NEO has such an advantage and head start. Now Tesla clearly has the expertise to create battery swapping stations, as demonstrated by their pilot test in California. The naysayers believe that Tesla simply can't do it, it's a difficult problem to solve, and NEO has made some sort of battery swapping breakthrough given all of their patents and pushed themselves ahead of Tesla. According to Electric's article, a data provider, Nian Yancha, said that Tesla China's business registrations recently added sales of battery swap facilities for new energy vehicles, hinting that Tesla may get into the swapping business. 
However, Tesla quickly shut down the idea, and it seems likely that Tesla legitimately does not want to go into the battery swapping business. According to this Electric article, Tesla says that battery swapping is riddled with problems and that the best way to power its vehicles is with simple electric charging. So let's have a look at the disadvantages of swapping. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit the like button at any time during this video. We'd super appreciate that. Also, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back nine years, and it's all freely available. Battery swapping stations are large machines that are expensive to build. According to this driving article, at least in 2013, a single battery swapping station cost on the order of $3 million. The price has likely come down significantly since then. While it's difficult to find exact dollar values, according to this paper for an electric swapping station system, the cost per station was about $700,000 in 2017. A single station is likely still hundreds of thousands of dollars today and can only swap one car battery at a time. If it takes 10 minutes to do a swap, that's just six car charges per hour in terms of throughput. On the other hand, Tesla superchargers are significantly cheaper and can be placed in existing parking lots with no obtrusiveness. Again, in 2017, a UBS analyst estimated that it would cost about $8 billion for Tesla to make supercharging as common as gas stations. Using these numbers, it would mean a single supercharger costs approximately $38,000 to produce in 2017. In November of 2020, Tesla purchased a $6.4 million facility in Shanghai that will produce 10,000 superchargers per year, and this factory has just begun production in February 2021. Altogether, it is estimated that building an 8-stall Tesla supercharging station could be a fraction of the cost of a single NEO swapping station. If it takes 30 minutes, let's say on average, to charge a vehicle, then with just three superchargers, Tesla surpasses the throughput of a swapping station, but at a fraction of the initial cost. This means that swapping stations are much less scalable than chargers. In addition, superchargers are small and require almost no maintenance. On the other hand, swapping stations have hundreds of moving parts, which means they require periodic maintenance and repair. Does a swapping station work if the bolts or other parts of the battery are rusted or stuck? Swapping stations currently also require the owner of the vehicle to exit the vehicle and give it to an attendant to drive it into the station to perform the swap. While this may change in the future, it is currently an inconvenience for the driver and paying for an attendant is a large added cost for NEO. These costs are paid for partially from the swapping fee and NEO may have additional expenses to provide this support. This compares to Tesla's model of simply charging customers just for the electricity they use. Furthermore, NEO's version 2.0 charging stations have 13 batteries that they also need to charge with electricity. So NEO is having consumers pay for this cost as well as all the additional operating expenses. Batteries are also in short supply around the world. However, for each charging station that NEO brings up, they need to build 13 extra battery packs that don't actually go inside any car. Contrary to that, every battery pack that Tesla builds goes into a car, but NEO must have extra packs waiting idle in order to swap in case someone shows up. And if a battery pack itself degrades over time, the station needs to swap the pack, which adds even more responsibility and logistics that NEO has to deal with. NEO has recently passed a total of 500,000 swaps at its stations. Assuming they have 160 stations in operation, this is about 3,000 swaps per station, or 8 swaps per day for a single station. While I may have overestimated the average number of stations in operation, this calculation generously assumes 500,000 swaps per year, when in fact, this was since inception. So the number could be lower, but let's assume 8 swaps per day on average. If a full swap takes 6 minutes, this means that the swapping stations are currently operating for less than 1 hour per day. They're underutilized and sit idle most of the time. This may change in the future as NEO puts more cars on the road, but so far this endeavor seems very expensive for something that isn't actually being used all that much. This is why NEO reports a number of swaps to make the numbers seem very large. Keep in mind that even if the station is not in use, an attendant needs to be paid, the 13 batteries still need to be kept charged, the stations still need maintenance. While superchargers take longer to charge up a vehicle, they have higher utilization and are much cheaper to have sit idle. 
To further explain this, while we calculated 8 battery station swaps per day, this is an average. Some stations may not see any swaps at all, while other stations may have large lineups. So for example, if you pull up to a NEO swapping station, there is only one machine that does swapping, but maybe there are four other cars in front of you. At 6 to 10 minutes each for the entire process, it could be a 30 to 40 minute wait. Even with one car in front, the 6 minute swapping time becomes meaningless if it in fact takes 10 minutes before it's even your turn. Tesla's strategy of having many more smaller but slower chargers means that there are fewer lineups, believe it or not, and there are always new chargers being freed up. If you pull up to a Tesla supercharger station and there are four other people in front of you, that's fine because the station has eight or more chargers which all work in parallel, so everyone gets one right away. Having a single expensive swapping station acts as a bottleneck. It's also hard to add another station given cost and space constraints. As I said before, the stations are underutilized, so it makes no sense to add another station, even if the station undergoes bottlenecks during busy times of the day. On the other hand, it's easy to expand and scale chargers since they're cheaper and don't take up much space. NEO also offers customers the ability to forgo the battery and lease just the battery, saving them upfront costs of $10,000 in exchange for paying $150 to $250 a month depending on the battery size. NEO calls this battery as a service or BAAS. On the surface, this seems like a great option that Tesla cannot compete with because Tesla doesn't offer battery swapping. However, NEO's subscription to battery as a service is not unique and is purely a financial construct. The identical thing can be achieved simply by financing a Tesla. You make a large down payment equal to the car without the battery and then finance a portion similar to the cost of the battery. At least with financing, eventually you've purchased the battery and the payments stop, but with battery as a service, you pay forever. But what about not owning the battery because you want to swap yours out and upgrade to new battery technology at some point in the future? This seems like a pretty big advantage in favor of swapping. However, this means that NEO needs to make all of their future batteries backward compatible and test them on older vehicle models. As mentioned earlier, a NEO swapping station holds 13 batteries, but does each vehicle type have a different battery type? Do they have 70 kilowatt hours and 100 kilowatt hours, and in the future, 150 kilowatt hour batteries? What happens when there's a lineup of people giving back their old batteries to get new ones? The station will need to be replenished with new state-of-the-art batteries, which may be in low supply. The issue with promising to swap to new technology is that this will become a logistical nightmare and could slow down NEO's pace of innovation if they constantly need to support old vehicles that were promised new batteries. It's almost like taking a new iPhone battery from 2021 and putting it in a phone from 2011. Does it work? Is it the same physical size? Is it too powerful? Is the battery technology completely different? Customers may be limited with what's possible in terms of swapping to new technology. Along similar lines, when your battery degrades and has less total capacity to hold charge, you simply swap it out for a fresh one. NEO might need this if they have severe battery degradation. However, current Tesla batteries usually last the lifetime of the car, about 300,000 miles, and new batteries are said to last multiple car lifetimes at 1 million miles, meaning that Teslas are built such that you never need to change the battery. As a matter of fact, Tesla is so confident with their battery longevity that they are moving to structural batteries that are cell to pack, and they eliminate battery modules which previously would have allowed for swapping out dead cells. Now, Tesla will be building the battery right into the frame of the car, which takes battery swapping completely off the table. It won't be possible for Tesla. However, by doing this, Tesla saves 7-8% to of the costs on building their cars and their factories. This means that Tesla will be more competitive and they don't need to design for backward compatibility, which means they can innovate faster and keep coming out with new and better batteries and put them right into their latest cars. NEO will likely be spending their money making batteries for old cars that they've already sold but which are entitled to new batteries, or they will not support these cars which defeats the benefit of the battery as a service subscription. Who gets the new technology batteries first? New customers or current subscription paying owners? Who will get priority? And how will NEO produce enough batteries to expand their new car production while at the same time giving batteries to all the cars they already have on the road?
So what does it mean to have better batteries in the future anyways? More capacity, more power, more longevity? Will old models be able to take advantage of that? Or does the entire powertrain need to be swapped too? Usually the battery and the powertrain go hand in hand, especially for efficiency. What about faster charging? If new batteries are twice as fast at charging, it will make battery swapping completely obsolete. Consumers will be stuck paying for pointless battery subscriptions forever, and NEO will be stuck with all of these battery swapping stations, which eventually won't be used anymore. This will become a crutch, similar to having car dealerships, which aren't necessary. There are a handful of benefits for today's battery swapping technology, including faster charging and the promise to upgrade a degraded battery or to advance to the latest technology. However, it appears that the future will hold many challenges for swapping, including managing different types of batteries, building enough of them and bringing them into the needed locations. The costs associated with building and operating battery swapping stations, and of course this new technology coming down the pipeline that swapping makes so easy to upgrade to, has the potential to make that very thing obsolete and destroy the business model for battery swapping. NIO is investing heavily in expanding its battery swapping stations in China. Currently, the company has more swapping stations than actual regular chargers. Meanwhile, Tesla curiously piloted battery swapping in 2013 and then shut down the project. Now they're taking the industry in a new direction with structural batteries built right into the car, meaning that Tesla will never get into battery swapping. Battery swapping makes sense during a time when battery technology is in its infancy. However, the technology is advancing so rapidly, making it appear that battery swapping will become a crutch for those that embrace it, as it will have added costs for both companies and consumers. It's susceptible to multiple different types of bottlenecks that will inconvenience owners, and it will drastically hinder the pace of innovation. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We have an awesome in-depth video on NEO, which goes over their story and what they're up to today. I'll put the link in the description. Also, be sure to show some love and support to our sponsor, Brilliant.org. Links below as well. Let us know in the comments if you think Tesla will enter the battery swapping market, if you think NEO will continue with its unique offering, or if you think battery swapping will eventually become obsolete. Please hit the like button on this video, we'd super appreciate that. You can support us further on Patreon at patreon.com slash the market is open. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.